Greetings and greetings my fellow YouTube nurses. Welcome to Nurse Mendoza 2. This is the second video I'm going to talk about with critical thinking, hemodynamics, and try to talk about stability with the patients. Let's talk about diabetic ketoacidosis. It's simple. It's in the name. Diabetic ketoacidosis. Well, guess what? First off, you have to be diabetic, right? Second, ketones are going to be present and it's going to lead to acidotic of the body. So diabetic ketoacidosis. Come on guys. This is a no-brainer, right? Keep it simple. So, this is something you don't just memorize, throw away behind and you're done. No, you have to understand the ins and outs, the pathophysiology of it. So, what's the causes of diabetic ketoacidosis? First off, you have to be diabetic. Duh, right? Duh. So, if you're diabetic, you come in, there's four causes. I remember it as an acronym by MIGS, okay? It's M-I-G-S. First off, myocardial infarction, that's a stressor, can lead to diabetic ketoacidosis. Second one is infection, that's another stressor. Third one is GI bleed, that's a huge stressor. And the fourth one, I would have to say sepsis. We all know that can lead to diabetic ketoacidosis. So those are the causes. Now let's get to the nitty gritty. This is my favorite part, pathophysiology of DKA. First off, pancreas secretes insulin. insulin and uh, that helps bring your blood sugar down, right? At this time and at this point, you do not have any insulin. So you have probably type one at this point. So type one diabetic, no insulin, guess what? Your blood sugar is going up through the roof and at this point, your body's in starvation mode. Come on, man, I need some food, I need some energy, I need to feed my body. So at this point, what happens? You are not increasing your insulin. So what does insulin already do? Insulin binds to the sugar and pulls in a little bit of potassium. Let me say it again, a little bit of potassium, okay? That's important for your heart, right? So it pulls in and it binds potassium plus sugar, goes into the cell, and guess what it does? It feeds your whole body, so you're not even hungry anymore. You're not in that starvation mode. At this point, you do not have any insulin. So your blood sugar and everything, your potassium starts increasing your blood, so it's just filled all with it. And, I, and guess what your body is doing? It's still hungry, it's still starving. It needs to feed its body. Your heart, your brain, everything is asking for food, so your body, increases with the hormone. Well, actually, it, it goes into glucagon, then it goes into glycogen, and then, it, and then it goes into glucose. Yeah, it was kind of hard for me to say all those things. And guess what? You have more glucose because your body's thinking you need sugar. So now you're even more flooded with more and more and more sugar. Dude, your blood is just nasty with sugar. It's got so much now. So at this point, basically, your body's even starving, starving, even more starving, and starts eating what? fatty acids. It starts eating your fatty acids and fatty acids are what? Ketones. Yes, you guys got it right. Ketones. So they start building up and your body starts getting hungry. It starts feeding its heart, its brain and everything else because it needs to eat. So ketones start building up. And what is ketones, y'all? It's an acid. You go into metabolic acidosis. Not good. So your blood's already filled with sugar, right? Where does that need to go? It needs to go somewhere. Your kidneys need to filter something out, right? It needs to go pee. It needs to get this out. So your high blood sugar is already in an osmotic contact effect, effect. So you go into osmotic diuresis. And remember, high blood glucose is basically a, a, a high osmotic contact. And so it pulls in the water and it makes you just become dehydrated. So you're peeing out all this. Remember that high blood glucose equals osmotic diuresis. So it pulls in water into your high glucose blood and you're just peeing out. You're just psh, urinating like no other, pissing, pissing, pissing. And guess what's in your urine? You got ketones and you got glucose because you're so filled with sugar. Well, dude, you're already in metabolic acidosis, okay? That's a quick pathophysiology of how DKA is. And it starts off, right? So what are you gonna do as an assessment? Patient comes in, boom, they're lethargic, they're tired, they're decreased level of consciousness, and at this point, you're looking at them and they're complaining of nausea, complaining of vomiting. Have you heard of gastroparesis? Yeah, that's another problem with this. And so they have this fruity, weird breath. Well, guess what? They're metabolic acidosis. They're breathing out acid. It's basically acetone that you're smelling. It's a nasty smell. And you're like, what is that fruity breath smell? That's another key sign. The other one you're gonna definitely see is Kussmaul breathing. Dude, they're hyperventilating. Why? Because they're getting that CO2 out. Their body is already metabolic acidosis, eating that fatty acids, and ketones are increasing. So they're, they're getting it out by letting out CO2. So they're breathing super fast. Dude, those are the main assessments. Well, what are you gonna do as a nurse? You come in, you wanna be smart. You wanna show up to your doctor and be like, look, I got this. So what are you gonna order for labs and everything? First off, you're gonna go ahead and order the uh, blood sugar uh, in the check. It's gonna be above 250, clinical manifestation number one. The other one you're gonna check for is ABG. You wanna see if they're metabolic acidosis. So of course, their pH is gonna be, guess what? Less than 7.3. And what is the other one you're gonna look for? Bicarb, it's gonna be less than 15. <laughs> Boom. That's another way of knowing. Clinical manifestation number two, metabolic acidosis. So the third one you're also gonna check for is gonna go ahead and be uh, urine. Q 
ketones, glucose, that's gonna be positive in the urine. And the other one you're gonna go ahead and check for is uh, um, in the blood, ketones, you're gonna see that too. And you're also gonna look for their anion gap between three and 11, but it's gonna be above that. It's gonna be 12, 15, up to 20. So remember, that's key. The other ones you're gonna look for is CBC, H&H, &H, and so forth, but the chem panel is very, very important. Let me tell you why. Sodium is gonna be very low. Blood sugar, the higher it goes, the sodium drops. We're not gonna get into that, but you have to know that. Potassium, the only reason why potassium is increased, hyperkalemia, is because remember, insulin, when you do have insulin, it binds to the cell and it pulls, or I'm sorry, insulin pulls the sugar and it pulls in potassium. Right now, you're not pulling anything, so potassium is building up in the blood. So you're hyperkalemic, your potassium's up. Your BN, your creatinine, you already know that's gonna be up. It's not functioning right, your kidneys aren't working properly. And your bicarb is gonna be low. So you have to look at the glucose, it's already gonna be above 250. So that's another reason why you get chem panels. So dude, what else are you gonna do? As an awesome, awesome nurse, what's a treatment? What are you gonna tell the doctor? All right, dude, we just figured out diabetic ketoacidosis, and it's probably caused from sepsis infection, uh, a GI bleed, or myocardial infarction. Remember that, MIGS, remember that acronym? So what are you gonna do as a treatment? Dude, you're gonna bolus them with fluid, 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 normal saline, and let me tell you why. They're already dehydrated. Remember, osmotic diuresis, they're peeing, 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 so they're already dehydrated, so you have to give them fluid. At this point, you're giving normal saline, and then you're checking also hourly blood sugars. You're also checking hourly potassium. Why? Because when you give insulin every hour, Potassium, remember, it gets pulled in into the cell with insulin. So you wanna check for EKGs also. Make sure the heart doesn't have any dysrhythmias or arrhythmias at this point. So you're doing that. And the other one you're gonna also check is hourly output. See if they're urinating and making sure that they're peeing. That's very, very important. What else are you gonna look for as your treatment? You're gonna be a badass nurse once you know all this, guys. ABG, arterial blood gases. Hopefully they're decreasing the metabolic acidosis and going into a normal state. Above pH, 7.3 and above the bicarb 15 so they can get out of metabolic acidosis y'all the other one you're also going to check for is uh you know once the, the the blood sugar starts coming down you replace some potassium and so forth you're going to change the normal saline fluids to d5 normal uh d5w that's because you don't want them going into hypoglycemic that would be another horrible event we don't want that we're a smart nurse you're going to do that as a treatment you're going to get the patient better and you're going to tell them mother sucker take your insulin don't forget all right and once you get better, you're a tight nurse, you know what you know, and you get out and people will respect you even more because you know what you did right. All right, y'all, my fellow YouTube nurses, thank you for subscribing. Hit that like button, comment, and don't forget, thank you again for subscribing to the new Nurse Windows of Two. It's more critical, advanced thinking, and more hemodynamics of the patient and everything else, y'all. Don't forget, what do you think I should do my next video on? My fellow YouTube nurses, deuces.